What is the best strategy for a commercial loan brokerage going into 2024? To answer that question, you first need to understand where the market is at today, because when you understand what has been happening over the course of 2023 and the ongoing trends, how they're unfolding, this will position you to prepare for tomorrow and develop a strong strategy. So in this video, we're going to walk through the big market shifts that are happening right now. We're looking to understand the forces at play because when you understand them, you can transform these big shifts from a danger for your brokerage into a huge opportunity. So let's dig into the stats and look at what the numbers are telling us. First off, debt is growing around the country. We see this happening with the credit card balance being at a record high since the first time that the New York Fed began tracking in 1999. We're now at 1.079 trillion at the end of Q3 2023. And these stats, again, were early in the, right at the beginning of the year as we're filming this. So we don't have all of the Q4 numbers. So we're really looking at this trend, but it's been continuing, continuing, and will certainly uh, continue throughout or accelerate throughout Q4. And this debt that's growing is not just uh, consumer credit card debt. This debt is also across the board, both non-housing debt and housing debt on an upward trajectory, reaching the highest numbers we've ever seen. And this debt is translating into the real estate market. And then in a moment, we'll look at the commercial real estate market. But the amount of outstanding multifamily mortgages is increasing astronomically, jumping 7.1% uh, uh, year over year. And we're seeing this in the non-residential commercial mortgage space. So multifamily being commercial but residential properties. And we're seeing in the, the rest of the commercial space with your uh, retail and your office and your industrial. All of these properties are also seeing a significant increase in outstanding mortgages. At the same time, we're seeing an increase rapid increase in foreclosure filings. We're seeing a 34% increase year over year, and we're also seeing this trend coming out monthly. And feel free to pause this video and really jump into the stats you have up on the screen uh, if you like to drill into the numbers more. And as always, we're sourcing them and letting you know where they're all coming from. Now this trend, uh, this challenging trend, the commercial real estate space is perhaps playing out with the hardest pressures in the office space. Because as we're moving from a post-COVID, post-pandemic environment, office workers haven't returned in the same way. Cornell College of Business uh, has found that 20% of office space is vacant across the U.S. market. Whereas the Commercial Edge Market Bulletin, a leading source for uh, real estate reports, has found that we're at 17.8%, which is a significant year over year over year increase. And making this all the more challenging, 15% of office loans are coming due by this year. One third due by 2026. Now with the structure of many commercial mortgages or office loans, having a significant balloon payment at the end, they often require refinancing. And if your property is vacant, you're not going to have the right financials to be able to refi that loan, significantly increasing forecasted foreclosures coming up in 2024. So what is this, all of this pressure doing to banks? Because these economic forces have a direct impact in banks and banks are changing their policies, their strategies, their structure. And this is reshaping the playing field for commercial lending and particularly for commercial loan brokerages in the alternative space. So let's look at what's happening in banking over the past year. First off, 
Notably, banks have failed. In the past year, we've seen five bank failures, and those include very significantly the second, the third, the fourth largest bank failures in all of American history. At the same time, it's not just those banks that have failed. Many other banks have been downgraded, meaning they have a significantly worse financial position and forecast by monitoring agencies. Moody's cut the rankings for the ratings for 10 banks, including M&T and others, and even more have been marked under review, which is the nice way of saying things are not looking good, so we're not going to give an official downgrading yet, but it is probably coming. At the same time, we've seen 11 additional banks being shifted from a stable outlook to a negative outlook. And you see some pretty big names on this list. Now, along with these closures, these failures of banks and the downgrading, we're seeing banks adjusting in very significant ways. One of the most significant bank layoffs. Bank of America cut 7,500 jobs and they are committed to continuing this process. We're seeing that overall, big banks have laid off more than 20,000 employees. There's only one major bank in the U.S. that has seen positive headcount growth throughout the past year. This headcount reduction is becoming because is coming because things are really uncertain in 2024, according to bank analysts. And these banks are looking for levers that they can pull on in order to keep earnings from decreasing and free up money for provisions as more loans go bad. In other words, this headcount reduction is coming as part of a larger trend where banks are preparing for instability and is notably tied to their loan loss reserves. Those reserves are the cash that a bank sets aside in order to be able to deal with failed loans. And the banking industry is reporting the highest year-over-year -year earnings growth of all the five industries in the financial sector at 25% year-over-year earnings, which sounds great. However, we are also seeing at the same time much higher provisions for loan losses. In other words, while cash is coming in, banks know that this is going to be a challenging year ahead. So they are reducing headcount. They're freeing up cash and they're redirecting cash to their loan loss preserves or reserves where they are holding it so they can weather the storm as loans go bad. We see that JP Morgan Chase has increased its reserves from 2.9 from 1.1 billion to 2.9 billion year over year. That's a 150% increase, a strong sign that they see some very bad weather coming this way. And for all of the 15 companies in the S&P 500 in the banking industry, we're seeing the exact same trend. Significant increases year over year in loan loss reserves. And the nation's six largest banks have written off over the first portion of 2023 have written off $5 billion in defaulted loans. And they're setting aside another $7.6 billion to cover bad loans. This is a very significant increase. Now, this could be seen as a very bad omen, but... Whenever you're going into a new market, that's creating new opportunities. 
economic shifts today that we've seen statistically, these shifts are placing huge pressure on banks. And banks, in turn, are reacting with more conservative underwriting. In other words, they are less willing to lend out money. And as more and more business owners and real estate investors are declined, as they're getting a no on their financing applications from banks and credit unions, they are left searching for alternative financing because these business owners, these real estate investors are still committed to their business ventures. They're still committed to success and to growth, but they aren't getting the support from banks for their endeavors. And is this a challenging environment? Yes, of course. But is it also an enormous opportunity? When you think about it, half of all of the Fortune 500 companies today were created during either a recession or a significant economic crisis. What we are facing today is a huge opportunity because there is a widening gap that has emerged over 2023 and is poised to rapidly accelerate in 2024. And this gap is leaving business owners and real estate investors struggling to get the financing they need to maintain and grow their operations. And some of but one needs to fill this growing gap. Someone needs to step up, to raise their hand, and to say, I will help out these business owners and these investors. And this is a huge opportunity as we go into 2024. A key part of this is that you need to have the right lender network that is still active in today's market. You also need to start building those relationships with the banks that are turning clients out of their doors left and right. So let's go ahead and talk about how to best leverage the growing demand that we're seeing for alternative financing. Because with the right strategy, you can turn 2024 into the best year yet for your brokerage. We work day in and day out with commercial loan brokerages and lenders around the country, helping them to deploy these strategies. So visit our website to learn more and go ahead, schedule a free coaching call with some of the experienced coaches on our staff to talk in more depth about what we see happening in the marketplace today the brokerages that are using these strategies, how that's playing out for them, and get all of your other questions answered. We look forward to speaking with you and supporting your success in growing your brokerage.